Okay, we're ready. Thank you, Tame. Ke 
Hei ko nei katoa mātou e haere tō tika mai. <coughs> I runga, i runga, i takakāro rangatira a tō tātou koromatua, i a koe, e pōla, e mihikau ana ki a koe. Ngō whakāro uh, kia wāte hia mai, te huarahi, kia tai mai, e te heo mātou hapū. E whai wāhi ana mā rātou, kia whakataho tō mai, i ngā āhuatanga o tō mātou, o mātou hapū, e rima. E roto i a kirikiri roa nei. E mihi kauana ki a koe, me ngā mema o te kauni hera, te ngā koutou, te ngā koutou. Ka re pū me roa ta kōrero, ko te mea nui kua taima. Kia whakatutu ki nei i te wahanga, whakaritea nei e tō tātou, tō tātou kauni hera nei i tēnei rā. No e da me mihi kauana ki a koe te katoa, huri noa i raro i te tūne i tō tātou whare. Te ngā koutou, te ngā koutou, kia ora mai no tātou katoa. Tonga tarangi a ke te... Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you warmly to this meeting and thank you for coming. There are a lot of very passionate people here today with very deeply held views. So I do just want to quickly run through how I intend to chair the meeting in the first place so that we all understand. I am aiming to be as fair as possible to everyone, but I also need to be fair to my councillors and to ensure that we have enough time as a council to debate this very important issue so that we can re reach a decision and go forward from there. This is a public meeting, so of course, you're very welcome here to hear the whole of the debate, and I hope you will stay for the debate. The meeting is essentially a continuation of an item that we first discussed on April 1st, and at that meeting, a number of people took the opportunity to directly address councillors, and I want to thank them for doing so. However, a number of new people have also indicated they want to talk to us, although this issue isn't entirely new. Uh, and to be fair, my emphasis will be allowing people who have not previously spoken to speak again in the first place. I'm sorry because I know this won't please everyone, but I am, because of the sheer numbers today, going to limit the speaking time to two minutes, which does not include the time taken for any karakia or waiata that you may wish. There might be the odd exception to this, because out of fairness, I think this council is a fair one. However, we have to have some boundaries so that we can get through the mahi today. 
But I do want to emphasise two things. Today's meeting is to decide in very simple terms if we overturn, revoke, quash the decision of April the 1st to provide more certainty and to make a new decision to send the issue of Māori wards to the community for a broader conversation and decide today that that, that means everyone in this room and beyond. And we welcome and encourage you to have your say. So while today is one opportunity to share your voice, it won't be the last, because engagement will follow. Secondly, I acknowledge this issue has continued to draw deep passions, but here today, this is a respectful forum. And I would ask you, please, to remain respectful and courteous to all that are here. Thank you for your words around that, Tummy. The only way I believe that we're going to move forward and I think we can all probably agree, is if we do so on that basis. Uh, and so on that basis, we'll start with the public forum. Um, and this has been determined um, in, in order of requests and a number of other factors. Sorry, where's my list gone again? No. You got the list? It's on the back of that. Back of that one? Back of that one. That one. Yeah. yeah, but thank you. Thank you. A few bits of papers, paper here. <laughs> All right, we, um, we went, welcome Benjamin Doyle to address us, please. Go to Benjamin. Come on forward. Te katoa. Ko puki nui te maunga. Ko waitangi te awa. Ko hokianga te moana. Ko mata faurua te waka, ko te whare tapu o Ngāpui te iwi. Ko te pōpoto te hapū, ko rāwhiti roa te marae. Ko Benjamin Doyle tō kuingoa. Today I speak on behalf of my whānau, especially my kuia and my tamaiti. Firstly, I want to acknowledge those who are no longer with us, and those who have yet to arrive. I am acutely aware that we are just a brief moment in the whakapapa of existence, but that our actions and their effects are capable of generational change beyond our physical lives, for better or for worse. The implementation of Māori wards is an opportunity to affect change for the better. Article 2 of Te Tiriti o Waitangi guarantees Māori the right to tino ranga tiratanga, self-determination. This means the ability to make decisions for and by ourselves. It is right then that Māori should decide what is best for Māori. This includes whether or not Māori, Māori wards are needed and subsequently who will best represent the voice and aspirations of our people at the council table. It is heartening that the City Council is reconsidering its initial decision not to implement Māori wards. I understand that there was hesitancy due to a lack of public consultation. Encouragingly, there have been a number of affirmative expressions of support for Māori wards, including from Komatua, Iwi, Hapu, members of Māngai Māori, and as you can see, people here today. I'm sure that broader consultation with Māori the community exclusively affected by this decision will reiterate such support. One role of the council is to represent the interests of Hamilton. This is not being achieved for Māori at present. And expecting that to change with the status quo is either wishful thinking or willful ignorance. Guaranteeing Māori representation by establishing wards, however, will help to achieve this responsibility in practical terms. With this achieved, I believe there will be an increase in voter turnout for Māori, 
who will finally be able to see ourselves participating in a, an historically inhospitable political structure. A step towards a more fair and representative democracy. What is there to be lost by this proposed change? As far as I'm aware, there are no seats being taken away. There are no voices being silenced. Is it not an incredible opportunity for inclusion, for kōrero, new ideas and even more diverse perspectives? Is this not an opportunity to truly respect tangata whenua and to take another step towards the aspiration of a positive and productive treaty partnership? Is this not an opportunity to build connection, an opportunity to act with aroha? The way I see it, there is absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. Mā pango, mā whero, ka oiti ai te mahi. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora, Benjamin. Thank you for that. Our next speaker, because um, we're taking those that haven't spoken already once first, uh, Joe Trinder. Kia ora, Joe. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko Joe Trinder, taka wingua. Now many of you suffer from historic amnesia by conveniently forgetting vast tracts of history. I will offer you the untold history of Hamilton Kirikiriro. In 1863, the British Army ruthlessly attacked the pass site of Kirikiriro, driving off the original inhabitants off their ancestral lands. Kirikiriroa was confiscated and occupied by greedy military settlers. This was nothing more than land confiscation, not the benevolent sharing of technology and civilization as they would lead us to believe. In 1867, they renamed Kirikiriroa to the township of Hamilton after Captain John Fame Hamilton, a failed battlefield commander who stuck his head up over the parapet at the Battle of Gate Par and was shot between the eyes by a sniper. Hardly an act of brave gallantry deserving of naming a large metropolitan city after him. As the military settlers had a malignant racist attitude towards Māori people, they were required to have an escort before them before they were permitted to enter the township of Hamilton. The local Waikato Member of Parliament, John Bryce, when deployed to the Taranaki as the commander of the Kai Iwi Cavalry, men under his command ruthlessly sliced children's heads off with a sabre, clean off their shoulders. <laughs> On the 5th of November 1881, Bryce led 1,600 of the armed constabulary to rape women and children at the peaceful village of Parehaka. He arrested the men, sent them to Dunedin to be used as slaves to build infrastructure such as Shaw Street, Portobello Road, Otago Boys High School and the Botanical Gardens. In honour of these acts of cowardice by the war criminal John Bryce, he was glorified by the Hamilton Borough Council by naming Bryce Street after him. When the Borough Council Act was enacted in the 1880s, Māori were deliberately excluded from participating in local government by gerrymandering based on land ownership. During the 19th and 20th century, the Hamilton City Council was a bastion of Anglo-Saxon hegemony, a form of race-based privilege. Now in the 21st century, we have an opportunity to permit tangata whenua to participate in democracy as Indigenous rights advocates instead of the tokenistic participation we have today. 
you also have an obligation to atone for the cruelty and racism that has been apportioned out to tangata whenua. I will leave you with these condescending and patronising words of the Member of Parliament for Waikato, John Bryce. It is an absurdity for Māoris to believe they should manage their own affairs and utterly impractical for them to think they should play a greater role in deciding on ownership of their lands. <laughs> Kia ora. Kia ora, Joe. That was a better, better British accent than my own, so well done. Indeed. <laughs> um, Dr Jacqueline Ek Ek El Elkington, apologies. seven beautiful children here in the mighty Waikato and as a graduate of the University of Waikato myself in psychology and narrative therapy most of my learning experiences in terms of engaging with people have come from uh, the social services lecturer at tertiary education and if there is one simple aspect about transformational change we can probably all agree on it is this and that is to understand the barriers and blocks to that change but here is the thing around Māori wards it's not a change it is merely a restoration of what was let me explain before the governance of Sir George Grey Grey Street is one of the street sign names we must support that campaign done called decolonising oppressive names everywhere such as Von Tempsky, Bryce Grey and Cameron but I digress so in pre-colonial times, the whole of Waikato was made up of five Māori wards called hapu. These five hapu still exist today, but wards were reduced to two and now none. So what changed? May I draw your attention to two acts of 1863, very popular today, isn't it, Joe? Why? Because the same attitudes behind those acts are being unjustly enforced today. And about what uh, about which this, some of the council clearly are not aware, otherwise there would be no vote for Māori wards, they would already be there. So the first piece of legislation is the New Zealand Settlements Act. This allowed land to be purchased in individual title. Land was taken from Māori, confiscated, stolen, thieved, whatever definition you want to give to acquisition but certainly without fairness or normal conscience, sorry, moral conscience. The second piece of legislation is the Suppression of Rebellion Act, which followed the same year, 1863. This denied Māori from rebelling against the theft of their own land in defence of keeping their own land. No moral conscience could agree with such laws. These statutes were racist. Why? Because they privileged Pākehā while they unjustly marginalised Māori. They were race-based. Why? Because only Māori owned land back then. So I agree with no more, um, no, no racist seats, which is what we have now. I totally agree with that. None of that. Um, the uh, racist evasion simply not motivated to advantage Pākehā and disadvantage Māori. This is what racism towards Māori looks like. Any motivation to advantage Pākehā at the expense of Māori, enforced by an unjust majority-based voting system for numbers, because majority rules is not just, even when you are a majority. What we need is an equity-based voting system for what is right. So I mentioned Sir George Grey before, just not because we need to support the campaign done, but also because I see a parallel between how he consulted with Māori chiefs, um, much the way you, Paula, consult with Māori. We know also how George Grey contested with a cabinet of councillors, much like what you have here, because they opposed Grey's consultation process with Māori. Uh, and similarly, the same way, Paula, you are contesting with some of your council who clearly opposed your fair consultation process with Māori. And I feel for you, I really do. You're in a very awkward position. But two weeks ago, we saw councillors believing they were representing constituents until social media corrected those distortions for them and for us. One councillor feared that to move from 15 elected wards and zero Māori wards to 15 elected wards and one Māori ward was to move from one extreme to the other. Those were the words. While I agree with one extreme she highlights, 
One Māori ward is hardly a move to the other extreme. This exposed your grave gap in knowledge and possibly one or two of your colleagues about the five Māori wards that existed before. Having said that, the councillors are a direct result of an education system that has failed you. The history was not taught to you. The history was kept from you. And because of it, we are forced to use this public speaking time educating your council. So I have no choice but to find some solace in sharing awareness and maybe education so that at least we are all now on the same page. Te Pau Manua Ora might also be that page. History being one of the pillars exposes a moral injustice underpinned by painful racism, but it does inform the origin on which Kiri Kiri or Hamilton gained its wealth, sourced from Māori, sourced from Māori land, growing the city's prosperity, another pillar. A restoration of Māori wards balances out the inequality we've been seeking to achieve. Uh, not an ideal, provides us with a clear pathway for us all to move forward together in voting not only yes to Māori wards, but yes to five Māori wards. Kia ora. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Brett Ursig. Ursig? <coughs> G'day. Um, thank you for being here. I'm very nervous, but I really agree with your first speech. The uh, first speaker is very good. Oh yeah. Sorry. Okay. Right. New Zealand was an uninhabited country. No one lived here. Then the first migrants came by Waka. These migrants then gave birth to children, and those children became the first native people of this country, Maori. Later on, other migrants arrived by ship and plane. These people also gave birth, and their children, New Zealand-born children, also have become natives of New Zealand. Every person's ancestors in New Zealand have come from overseas. And this is the problem, the lack of recognition of the more recent New Zealand-born native people. So I accuse the Council and the New Zealand Government of racism by exclusion and favouritism based on where a person's ancestors have come from when setting policy. Māori Wards is an example of this. Imagine the calls of racism from Māori if we had a policy such as by Europeans only, for Europeans only, and only European wards. But I do support Māori having a guiding hand, a strong culture and language. I believe having a unique New Zealand Māori language builds New Zealand's identity. That Māori, what Māori are seeking is, should not be asked for, but is a birthright. But by, not excluding, but by not excluding other New Zealand-born citizens' right to self-determination. Unfortunately, the government sold us all out in 1972 by giving non-citizens the right to vote and diluting your vote. So what's the answer? I don't know. Maybe for the council to do real consultationally evenly, not just with one group for months and lip service to the others. For the government and council to recognise our identity and not to discriminate against its own citizens based on ancestry. And lastly, for citizens only to have the right to vote and not, non, and not New Zealand residents, because they are not citizens. I know my wife is a resident and she is not a citizen and she does not say she's a New Zealander, and neither do my friends. Right, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Brett. <laughs> Malina. If I say this incorrectly, please forgive me. Is that was that correct pronunciation? No, please, please correct me. Kinga mana inga reo te matata katoa o Malaina hua kito kuinga no te haua uru a hau no te taharoa. As I pondered over what I was going to say today, I thought to myself, when I stand in front of you all, what do you see? Do you see Malaina who is a singer? Do you see Malena, who is a kapahaka extraordinaire? Do you see Malena as a homeowner? Malena, who has a small business and whose children also follow in her footsteps. Do you see Malena, who is a solo mother? Do you see Malena, who is also of Swiss German ancestry, English ancestry, and Māori? What do you see? And if you were given an opportunity to prioritise that, which one would you put first here today? So I ask you today, to find courage. Once upon a time, you had courage to step into the space. Then one day you became a council member, which is awesome. And I'm sure you were elated 
to you know, receive such uh, an honour to represent Milena and all her friends. And with that would have come uncertainty. And today we arrive at the same place where there's a bit of uncertainty whether you are going to sport the wards or not. So I ask you to be courageous. I ask you to make a decision today that is for the good of people, for the good of the, your next 10 generations. Because your mokopuna will be bilingual. Your mokopuna will know the history of our country, of our city and of our people. And so if you choose to not make the decision that is for the, better, for the good of the people, they're going to think, wow, Granddad Martin, Nana Paula, what were you even up to? <laughs> I speak the language of the country. Why would they make such a decision like that? They will never be able to understand the reasoning why you would want to continue to silence the perspective of mana whenua of this land who have no other home to go to. Tēnā tātou. Kia ora, Malena. appreciate that. Uh, Wurrumu, you're next. I'm just going to be as concise and brief as possible, uh, given that we only have about two minutes. One of the things I'm going to suggest in terms of determining the, the Māori world boundaries is to su suggest the following. The geographic boundary of the Mangaharakeke Gully, north of the city, to Nukuhau, be the boundary for the west um, and on the east side from Te Awa Katapaki to the Manguonua to be the geographic boundary for Hamilton East. So rather than translate uh, Kirikiri Roa Rafati and Kirikiri Roa Hauaruru, let's use the Tupuna place names that define the geographic boundaries of what our potential wards could look like. So I just wanted to put that up as a suggestion before the council. And that is following uh, Tikanga Māori, because our boundaries were determined by landmarks, uh, geographic landmarks that um, uh, hopefully there, there will be a process to, uh, to revive the ancestral place names associated with those areas. The other one is, if you are going to have Māori councils on board, how much of a pay cut are your councils going to take? Uh, because you're all, got, you're all paid under the Local Government Act, so if you're going to have extra councillors, where's the budget going to come from to pay for the representation on board this, uh, to be part of this discussion? Uh, so what does that actually look like? Uh, secondly, how many, how many ward councillors are you going to provide for in order for the effective voice to be heard here? I'm suggesting possibly that there needs to be a voice representing the rangatahi, there needs to be a voice that represents uh, maybe my age group, but I think uh, it, it is a step in the right direction to have Māori representation uh, around this table. And I think, um, I'm going to, at this point I'll stop because I'll allow my auntie just to have a, have a word, because yes. uh, she is the senior kuya yes. of Ngāti Wairiri. Absolutely. Aroha mai e karimata kutua. Hi. So what I'm saying is, and following up to, to what William was saying here, that uh, yes, I, I do support the uh, having a Māori ward, really do. I think it's time. We have enough. Uh, we have enough people in Kirikiri Roa now. I don't know what our population is. We must be fourth, fourth highest in New Zealand, and uh, large proportion too, and mostly all from uh, Matawaka that settle here in Kirikiri Roa. But uh, but I just just want to note to you that uh, we have a legacy, and that legacy is uh, is definitely something that I I I want our rangatahi to follow up to keep on with that legacy of theirs and know who they are, where they come from, and why they are here, and what they must do for the future, for the next generation that are coming through forward. 
and we are going to do that. But I know one thing for sure, you can take uh, weidere out of kirikiri raw, but you can't take uh, kirikiri raw out of weidere. So put that in your hat and see if you can sort that out. <laughs> but I am, uh, I stand here standing very positive, positive for the future, and we have. We have to be very positive about the future for our young generation that are coming through. And they're, the, they're my concern at this moment. I, uh, uh, we have quite a few now that are coming through uh, uh, Māori, through the Kaupapa Māori, like uh, Rākau Manga and all the other Māori culture groups. And um, we do have a good lot of young people. We have over 1,000, 1,000, I mean, 2,000, uh, 1,261 beneficiaries. And that's in Ngāti Waitere itself. So there is a lot of young people incorporated in that. And so my aim is really for them, that they can uh, do exactly what the ancestors did. Kiri kiri hoa hira roa here. It had an economy on its own. I mean, I'm going back 1700. Kiri kiri roa, we well, were here. Ngāti Waitere were here, 1700. And they did build up an economy. And thanks to the ministers who early, the early uh, pioneers were the ministers who came and help Ngāti Wairere, and by having to establish um, gardens and uh, fruit trees, what you call planted peach trees, and that's how you got peach growth. So there was a, an economy here, right here, and that, was, that evolved. And so I likewise sort of relate that to our young people today, to look that direction and helping to build an, an economy for ourselves. And so um, now that's all I've got to pass on to you, Paula. And thank you very much for hearing me out. Noreira, kia ora tata. Nā mihi mahana kia kōrua. Dr. Rawari. Uh, I recently uh, <coughs> saw in a post um, how the Hamilton City Council spoke about uh, uh, engaging with ratepayers over the Māori world issue. My submission is this, that the Te Tiriti o Waitangi relationship partnership is something that predates uh, ratepayers and actually predates the Hamilton City Council itself. Um, when we look at the Tiriti o Waitangi relationship, it was built off the back of the Whakaputanga Declaration of Independence. Uh, which established a few things. And the first one is that Māori, that Aotearoa New Zealand was an independent sovereign state of Māori. And that they recognised no other authority except from themselves to exist in this country without their permission. Um, I was going to go into the Te Tiriti of Waitangi, but I think I'll, 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 I'll skip that. But I'll go to... Uh, um, uh, I was lucky to do some of my PhD research with uh, Te Paparaki o Tarahi, uh, where uh, what they said is Te Wakamininga or the United Confederation of Chiefs, they envisioned that Hobson would engage with them, so he would be part of them, and they would be collectively making uh, laws and dispensing justice. And so what that highlights is that even from the very beginning, it's all been about relationships, connections, partnership. I don't use the word partnership because um, uh, since 1840, a partnership hasn't really gone that well. Um, so from my point of view, um, um, the Hamilton City Council hasn't necessarily had a uh, Te Tiriti o Waitangi uh, partnership relationship with Māori. And if they did, if they would have, 
we would have Māori wards here today. I am uh, um, envisioned to, um, to discuss this, but when you look at how the Hamilton City Council was established, it was established, like others have pointed out, on the back of the invasion of my people who were defending their homes, their lives and their families. And the other thing that happened is that those who attacked our people were made heroes. They made statues of them. They placed uh, their names on the streets. Now, for me, that's the same as getting the Australian terrorist and putting his name on every street that holds a mosque. What we're talking about is the intergenerational uh, lived experiences of my people. You might be part of this whakapapa, but we are. And so what I'm talking about, you take a stone, you drop it into a pond, it creates intergenerational ripple effects from trauma. So for me, um, this is all about the Treaty of Waitangi relationship and how we begin to engage and move forward in the future. And so what I would like to see, I would like to see uh, us establishing uh, Māori wards so that we can, as a people, uh, uh, collectively can move forward together. Naraira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora matata koutou. Kia ora, Dr Rāwiri. Alvaina. Welcome. Kia ora. Kia ora koutou. Nā mihi nui ki a koutou. Kia ora Dave. Kia ora Martin, kia ora Sarah, and kia ora Maxine. Honourable Justice uh, Wallace stated during the Royal Commission on the uh, Electoral System in 1986 that it was essential to have the, a full understanding of the history of Māori representation. Unless decisions concerning Māori representation are made in the context of our history, past misunderstandings are likely to continue. And here we are today, 2021. Not much has changed, especially at this table. I commend you on changing the voting system from FPP to STV. Hoi anō, that took uh, decades and many campaigns, and I want to acknowledge Daphne at the back for the support that she, she gave to, the, to that. I heard recently uh, that it was not about individuals. Well, it is. This system is about that. Māori representation was blocked because of the concept of individualism. Further, as individuals, you will either support Māori wards or not. The reality is that it should be up to Māori to de decide that. There have been claims made about Mangai Māori being the ultimate gift from this collective. Māori should be standing, which should be aspirational that Māori should be backed by Waikato Tainui funds. Guess what? We have had four Māori voted on. Can you name them? In brief, your collective list of reasons why you don't want to power share continues. Can you name, um, continues. Telling us what is best for us continues, when in fact, Mangai Māori, Māori wards, Māori at every level in council is the answer. But you're not listening, you're resisting. When you do not uphold te atiriti, then this is racism. Democracy in this country was imposed and we have been fighting to be heard. Why would you want to delay this? From this table, the lack of knowledge on this city's history, Māori representation and the treaty is alarming. For example, Knowing our city's history would have stopped a 150-year-old birthday celebration that didn't exist. That was when the raupatu was imposed. Or that many of you do not see and understand the harm, read the street naming. This is why we need our people making decisions at this table. Be on the right side of history, Koto. There must be a shift in understanding of te ao Māori and the importance of Te Atiriti, the treaty, and our partnership. I conclude with option three, Māori wards and Mangai Māori. 
No further consultation. It is time to stop being scared about sharing the power. It is time to change. Ngā mihi. Sandra Puru. Kia ora. E tangata, e tangata, e tangata. People, please excuse my back. My people. Kia ora, Paula, um, and everyone else. Please um, excuse my, um, well, I suppose my non educated way of approach as I approach. But. Um, I've been diagnosed with uh, post-traumatic um, stress syndrome, I think it's called. And I don't know my own language. Really, I don't. I don't know how to call it a But I, um, I stand here, you know, with the, uh, yeah, with the wound that um, I need to be cured of. You know? It's, it's so much hurt. I'm, I'm listening to all this kōrero. And I'm like, whoa, fuck around, I feel ya. I feel ya, I feel this. And we really need that, uh, that, uh, what is this thing called again? Uh, the veto that he's put in. Veto, that means I forbid, I think, when I looked up in the dictionary last night. And I'm thinking, hey, uh, we are forbidden to, to say something, a voice. What, the, what is the definition of a voice? A voice is, I think, to express something that you'd like to say. And this is what I would really like to say is, Kiri Kiri Rua, this is where I grew up. I was brought here from um, my birthplace, uh, Rahui Pōkeka, 828. And uh, my ties are to, my iwi is Waikato, my waka is Kainui, um, what else, what else, what else? Oh, my standing place is Tūrā Wawai, and I really feel like I don't really fit in anywhere, and I'm really hurt with, we don't have a say? Oh, come on, man. And that Bron Tempsky keeps coming up, oh, just keeps coming up that name, and we've got a birthing centre there, and I don't really know who he was again, I can't remember, I hear so much, because I tune into, well, my radio station, eh? Because that's where I come alive, and, and actually, ironic enough, it's called time in life. And I'm thinking, hey, yeah, this is me, this is me. Because really, I'm used to, you know, like, I, really, where do I fit? Where do I fit? And I, I need a place to settle. I need a place to settle. Well, here it is. It's here. Kitty, kitty, raw, isn't it? I'm sure it is. So what I'm just saying is, the presence of everyone here. Yeah, this is my people. Māori. Please give us that, uh, you know, take that eyeful bit away and uh, give us some yeah. sort of uh, <laughs> Daphne Bell. Welcome, Daphne, a place you're familiar with. <laughs> thank you. Your Worship, councillors, thank you for the opportunity. Nā mihi nui, tenatato katoa. And thank you to all the speakers thus far. I've learned heaps. I think I'm not alone in reflecting on my journey to understand better te ao Māori. And this has happened also today. I grew up in the North Shore of Auckland in a totally Pākehā suburb. I was a student of history, but I learned more about Tudor England than I did about my own country. And it was only when I came to the Waikato that I learned more about Tainui, about Kingitanga, Tikanga, the 68 Marae, and Te Reo. And I guess this is a, an ongoing journey for most of us, or many of us. Um, I 
I well recall my first visit to a marae when I heard Māori spoken. And things have greatly improved. It's fair to say that, there, as we've said, heard, there have been very few Māori around this table. And sadly, none today. And in my experience, our previous engagement with Māori has been patchy and somewhat token. And this has been a serious gap for this council and this community, given the makeup of our, our people. Uh, there's a whakatoki, I can't recall the exact words, but it's about it taking a long time to turn a waka around. And we've certainly seen that happening, but it's improving substantially and much more comprehensively, meaningfully. I've been impressed by the calibre and the contribution of the current Mangai Māori on the council committees. But there's no substitute for sitting around this table and voting on the issue. Council has excellent community engagement and it will be enhanced and improved by having Māori wards. I thought at one time that Māori wards might be a transitional step to better representation, but I now understand that Māori wards will better reflect the treaty partnership. So this is not a new issue or a new need, and the choice, I suggest, is clear and understood. So let's decide now to have Māori wards sooner than later. Let's not delay for another further three years. Let's think inclusion and connection. Kia kaha, kia maya, kia mawanui. Thank you. Thank you, Daphne. Always a pleasure to have you here. Our next speaker, I think you want to speak. Is it Jeff Lewis? You want to speak? You, you don't want to speak. Okay. So the following one we have is Riti Key. Sorry, I've got just maybe down on the sheet wrong. Kia ora. Te Opodi, Nati Kahu, Te Arawa, Napui Nui Tonu, Toku Iwi, Ingadi, Kotai Nui, E Tu Tonu, Ki Taku Maori Tanga. Kia ora. Uh, I did a short bit, but oh, I'll read it out. Kia ora. This is a beautiful place. You've got beautiful people here. And they have the skills to make it grow. Let them, let them be here. They know how to look after the soil. They know how this land. They know it. They live here. It is awesome. Let them be here. I 100% support Tainui for the Māori Wars. Oh, that really means that. Sometimes when you look at council, how it works, it forgets the soil. It looks nice on the top, but our Māori people know the soil. It's in their bones. Allow them to be. Please let them. Oh, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, in the 1980s and 90s, uh, 90s, when Margaret Evans was the mayor, um, the Hamilton City Council formed a partnership with the Runanga Kirikiriro. And the partnership was re reviewed, and the runanga was moved to different um, headquarters. And today I hear about the Māngai Māori. Over 20 years, one small step. I believe it is appropriate that council makes another step 
and permit the Māori wards as opposed to waiting for another 20 years. I 100% support Timi Maipi and Tainui. Please, let them stand. They will look after our mokopuna and not put them at risk in which they stand now. Kia ora koutou. Thank you for that. Um, Vicky Young, to Papa Nui. Kia ora, Vicky. Kia ora koutou. You have seen me here before <laughs> speaking. Um, I'm representing Te Papa Nui Enderley Community Trust. I'm also representing all the Māori in here, all the Māori in New Zealand, and thank you for letting me have my say. Nā mihi to the four brave allies that we have in the room who voted for the Māori wards. And, yeah, I'm very proud of you because you were brave enough to do it. And I was very, very shocked, actually, and disappointed that others did not vote because I honestly was expecting it to pass. So I sat in this room, I sat back there stunned into silence that we could be in 2021 in this city and have that outcome. So I realised that there was something not quite right there. Maybe it's a lack of knowledge, a lack of information. I've been working, I'm a teacher that has been working at Waikato University for more than two decades. So if you, were, if you feel that you would like some further education, you know, I'm willing to offer my services to the council to teach them a little bit more about the incredible achievements that Māoris have always had We've been travelling and we've been trading offshore for more than a thousand years. Every time I travel, because another hat that I wear as well is an international, I'm an international speaker and I also look after and help indigenous cultures in other countries, which is my passion. Because we're all one, we're all the same, we're all human beings. And races, you know, you. Europeans, Māoris, we're humans. So I think this race thing needs to be put to bed. We need power sharing. This Treaty of Waitangi partnership is always lopsided. We need to share power. We need to share power for our people, for our rangatahi, for our babies, for the next generations, for our elders. And at Te Papa Nui, we've been trying very hard to set up um, something beautiful for all of our people in that community. And a lot of you have, you know, helped us and a lot of you have come down and, and said, you know, we're going to help you, we're, we're going to help you, but then you voted against it. And that's like, that's really broken my heart. So I'm like, wow, you lied to my face, basically. Yeah. You know, and I, that's how I feel. It's like, you know, I sat in front of people before, the day before, who were pro Māori. And then suddenly in this, in this voting, they voted against, against us. So I'm like, yeah. So please reconsider this issue because it's very important for everyone and for our children and our grandchildren. So please think carefully and I'd like you to remove that vote and vote in the right way, which shares power with Māori because we deserve it. Kia ora. There are a couple of people who did speak last time who have asked or insisted that they speak again today. That's um, that, that that's yep coming. That's fine. Um, I'm going to go to you next, Sakaya, and then a couple of other people. But just be mindful of of not standing on stuff that you said last time, but bring new information to the table. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm coming to you, uh, and that way we have fairness across all speakers. Sakai, would you like to come? Uh, before I start the speech, can I get someone to come and get the petition for remove the street signs? So we've got 150 over 150 signatures 
with addresses, Paula, this time. And this is the go with the other three and a half thousand nationally that signed the petition to remove the street signs. So thank you, Paula. Um, because I was brought up right, I'm going to let my kuya speak first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak again. It's too big a kaupapa to keep me silent. Kia ora mai And I'll just get right into it. Uh, the Right Honourable Nanaya Mahuta stated the government is supporting councils working to increase representation for Māori and local government by putting in place the same rules to establish Māori wards as general wards for 2022 local elections. Mixing Māori representation with separatism and racism and using that as a reason to stamp it out is, is exactly what leads to the erasing of Indigenous cultures. The essence of racism is tied up in systems of power. When a racial group is oppressed by systems of power and discriminated against based on their race, that is racism. Examples of this type of racism is where a group of people of a specific racial, racial group <coughs> have their land taken from them by constructs of law and are punished for speaking their own language, imprisoned for protecting their land, um, and or are oppressed through other policies, and then must live under the system of oppression by the very same people who did this to them. That, folks, is racism. Failure to acknowledge a history of oppression and its echoing effects is racism. Allowing such oppression to continue is racism. What these Māori wards look like, however, is not a race issue, it's a treaty issue. The Local Government Act and the Resource Management Act requires all councils to take account of the Treaty of Waitangi. Case law has carved out low, uh, ca ca sorry, case law has carved out how those obligations should be given effect to, arising out of the concept of partnership. When I last presented to the Council on April Fool's Day, <laughs> councillors used the word partnership on several occasions. The principles of, principles of partnership is well established in treaty jurisprudence. Both the courts and the Waitangi tri Tribunal frequently refer to the concept of partnership to describe the relationship between the Crown and Māori. The Court of Appeal is referred to the treaty relationship as akin to partnership. A business partnership arrangement, all partners share liabilities and profits equally. Let me say that again. In a business partnership arrangement, all partners share liabilities and profits equally. Based on the common law jurisprudence of the Treaty of Waitangi and the accepted business model of partnership, I profess that a Māori ward should be of equal partnership with 50-50 representation, arrangement of Māori and general seats. Creating mechanisms to ensure the establishment of Māori wards is not racism, it's called equity. Equity in representation, equity in inclusion, and equity in partnership. He whawhai tonu mātou, ake, ake, ake. Kia ora mai tātou. Kia ora koutou, ko Sakaia Te Smith tuku ingwa. I like to state that I am for the establishment of Māori seats, but not just one seat, but seats representative of a true partnership under Tariti or Waitangi. And no, I'm not just talking about a 50-50 partnership, but actually a 100-100 partnership. <laughs> Two independent peoples coming together and sharing the duties of local governance under their own mana and authority. In 1835, King William IV of the United Kingdom and protector of all British colonies first recognised Māori sovereignty under the Articles of He Whakaputanga, or Declaration of Independence, signed by 35 rangatira of the North and then a further 18 rangatira, which included the first Māori king, Pototo Te Whero Whero of Waikato Tainui. 
The Hefa Whakaputanga flag was also recognised on the open seas attached to Māori trading vessels and rang rangatira of Aotearoa had under them standing armies which qualified them as a confederated sovereign nation. Fast forward to 1840, we have Te Riti o Waitangi, another document signed by over 500 rangatira, including Māori from Waikato and the British Crown, to recognise a formal partnership between two independent groups of peoples. When we look at this history, one thing stands out to me. The Tau Iwi were looking to work and move forward with Māori together, despite the treachery and double crossing of the British Crown, which was later to come. Now let's go back further in time to ancient Sparta. In the Greek state of Sparta, there was a political system of rule called the diarchy system. Di meaning double, archi meaning ruled. So diarchy means double ruled or co ruled King Leonidas I and King Leotokaitis II both ruled Sparta successfully, working on a 100-100 partnership system, which continued on for many years after, with other kings carrying on the diarchy system. In the time of British India, the diarchy system was again in effect, but it was known as shared rule. Under the Indian, under the Indian Councils Act of 1892, there had to be Indian represent, re representation on local councils. Drumming home the fact that Indigenous or First Nations people had a right to co-govern or at least be at the table making and sharing in decisions as a partner, not just as a mere councillor. Aotearoa shares a unique situation along with other colonised countries in the fact that before the colonisers came here, there was already a system in place and that the tribes were already well established and laid claim to all whenua, wai, moana, awa, rangi and maunga. But today we sit here still debating whether Māori have a right to sit on this council. It wasn't too long ago that the British Council never recognised Indigenous peoples from Africa, Australia, Canada, North and South America, the Caribbean, Asia and Polynesia, including New Zealand, as human beings. We were classed as fauna and flora, which included animals of the forest floor. Today, as a human being created in the image of a mighty Atua, I humbly encourage the Hamilton City Council to do the right thing and allow these Māori awards to go ahead and be on the right side of history. Kia ora. Koriana Henderson. Kia ora. Um, oh gosh, uh, I just found out about this about four, 15 minutes before it started, so I don't have my. Um, so, not to repeat myself, I just wanted to remind us of um, the Local Government Act um, Section 4, uh, which requires councillors to facilitate participate. Um, participation by Māori and local authority decision-making processes. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I was enjoying so much. Um, I, I feel um, heartened and, and concerned that while we're here, we still are here on this side of things in the public uh, gallery and not on, on that side. And so my concern is uh, with um, Māori wards not being established, that that will, that will remain the situation. Um, I wanted to make it to those um, who changed their mind. I'm, I think of Dr. Phil, who spoke about um, when I knew better, I did better, right? And um, and so council decided we were going on one direction. You heard from Māori um, that that was the wrong direction, and you had the um, the courage and the, um, to, to change your direction. So I think that's my point. Um, I just wanted to, uh, uh, sorry, I don't have one. Oh gosh. <laughs> that's right, you're fine. Um, okay. The Local Government Act 2002 requires councils to establish and maintain, facilitate and provide opportunities for Māori to contribute and participate in decision-making processes in order to recognise and respect the council's obligations under Te Tiriti o Waitangi. Um, Māngai Māori roles do provide Māori with an opportunity to contribute to decision-making, but they don't provide an opportunity to participate in decision-making. 
Um, so at the last public meeting, Māori read clear that, um, that the mechanism that they would like to see Council um, established was for Māori wards to, um, to be established. Um, it's not a race issue, um, people that would have you believe that it is a race issue. The whole reason we're here is because somebody recognised that something wasn't fair, something was racist in the way that we legislate um, representation at these local government levels. And so that's why we're here today. And so I hope that you'll remember that it's not a race issue, it's a treaty-based issue. Māori are guaranteed a seat at these decision-making tables. Ngā mihi. <laughs> Hana. Hana, Taitemu. Ayo nuku, ayo rangi. Ayo te pau herenga tanga ta o te motu a kingi tu heitia. Ayo te ai tanga a tuki ka maari re 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 hau. Pai maari. Heri te nei no ngati fafakia, ngati mahuta me ngati wairere. I won't speak much today as I've already spoken and said what I've had to say. Ngā mihi mai o hākia koe matua tame me o kupu. Ko te marama i te rangi nei, ko o uenuku. Ko o uenuku, te marama kei runga i te haki o kingi mahuta. O uenuku is our moon phase today. O uenuku is a time of peacefulness and a time of resistance and hurt. I didn't want to speak again today because I warned and told you the first time. The fact that we have to debate, debate this kaupapa leaves me speechless. This shouldn't be a two-minute persuasive speech to try and convince you the right for me to have a voice at this table. I could give you a million reasons why and, and explanations as to why you need Māori wards, but today I'll just give you one. The fact that you have the opportunity to have an Indigenous voice on this table is enough. Like I said the last time, I am a product of the fight of my ruruhi and korohiki that are behind me. A product of te reo Māori, a product of te whare kura. I can read the moon, the stars and the water, but I can also count, read and write. <laughs> and I run my own business. I am saying this because we as Māori can walk in two worlds, and that is why you need us. I still can't see our seat around on this table, but I will make sure it will happen. So it isn't a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. Because we are not going to wait another 168 years. So I hope we use this maramataka wisely of O Uenuku and find a peaceful resolution for everyone in Kirikiriroa. Because what's right, what's good and right for Māori is good and right for everyone. If we can make a promise today, if you put in Māori wards, I'll make sure you won't see or hear from my pop again. <laughs> my last kupu, my last words to you today, ko taku kupu kia koe manu whiri, Kohi kohi a ngā marama o te waka, kia tōpū ki tō aro aro, waiho mā waho hei whera whera heko kopi kautau. My advice to you, Manufiri, is to gather the remains of the tribe before your presence. Leave others to divide them. Your task is to unite them. I'm still waiting on my seat. Thank you. Another person has requested to speak that we didn't have on the list, but out of fairness, uh, they've said they did call in. So um, we will now have Barbara before we go on to our Māori partners with Linda and so on. Barbara, welcome. <coughs> Kia ora. He uri ahau, no hauraki, ko Ko Barbara Stroud, ahau. 
I have a few questions for you. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge those who have spoken before me, and I support what they have said. I'd like to ask you, who amongst you represents me as tangata whenua at your decision-making table? Who amongst you represents my nine children, my 20 mukapuna, and my two great mukapuna? Who amongst you? You talk of conversations and consultations with the community, knowing full well that the majority is non-Māori. What right do you and the community have to decide what is best for tangata whenua? You have no right. We belong at the decision-making table. And by we, I mean tangata whenua, the indigenous people of Aotearoa. I put it to you that you use Māngai Māori in lieu of an elected member of Tangata Whenua. Their views and perspectives, and those are your words, are not a vote at the decision-making table. It is a manipulation of the tiriti or watangi. It must stop. And you have the opportunity to stop it today. Yesterday, Jacinda Ardern made a comment on a headline from Te Ao about racism. And she said she recognises institutional racism and it needs to be weeded out. And I put it to you, you need to start weeding today. Because this institution is racist by exclusion. We are not racist as tangata whenua. We are not separatists. We are tangata whenua, indigenous people of Aotearoa. Kia ora. Thank you, everyone. We are now moving into a phase of, of uh, hearing from our Māori partners. Um, Linda from Waikato Tainui, and also a hapu. So we'll start with you, Linda, as you represent both the position of Tainui and Ngāti Koroki Kahukura. I get more time. Yes, yeah, that's right. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou i ngā kai, uh, Firstly, let me commend you on convening this hui to uh, consider revoking the vote and having another shot at voting again to establish wards. Um, as Paula said, kia ora, te koro matua. I'm here today as Ngāti Koroki Kahukura and um, uh, on behalf of Waikato Tainui's executive, Te Aratauta, with my colleague Jackie Collier. And we are here today as treaty partner. That is our point of distinction from other constituents and your stakeholders. Yes, we are massive ratepayers who pay millions of dollars of rates from the base, send to place our hotels, our housing developments and so on. Ruakura and other construction projects are coming on that will breathe life into this city. Our balance sheets are intrinsically interlinked. But we are much more than that. We are a partner to Te Tiriti o Waitangi, this country's founding document. It is our land that this city is built on. As Waikato Tainui, we are also here as a JMA partner. Under our river settlement legislation, we had to fight to compel councils to regularly meet with us, to appoint Mātauranga Māori commissioners, to ensure we receive notice of resource consents and plan changes. We fought to have the rights of our river put first. After decades of short-sighted, siloed decisions by every council that has led to the degradation of our tupuna awa, Ewan, you asked last time, what does partnership look like? Well, it doesn't look like this. It starts to look like partnership when Māori voices are being heard at every level, staff, committees, hearings, panels, and at the council table, the ultimate decision-making forum. Inclusion at all levels of decision-making goes some way for the council to act honourably and in accordance with the provisions of Te Tiriti or Waitangi 
and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Māori wards have been in place at Waikato Regional Council for some years and the sky has not fallen in. <laughs> we must be heard and seen and seen to be heard. Māori might start to become more interested in local government. Vote yes to partnership. Māngai Māori are not a substitute for wards. When we established Māngai Māori together, it was a compromise. We all knew that pushing for wards then would lead to a referendum and a waste of time, energy and resource. Yes, Māngai Māori bring exceptional skills and experience, but that was a step towards establishing wards. And we urge the Council to retain these positions and vote yes to wards. It is time. There are no more excuses. I want to address a point that was raised during the public forum. The establishment of wards is not special undemocratic privilege. It is a form of affirmative action that addresses some of the unjust and discriminatory impacts of Crown actions and omissions acknowledged and apologised for in our treaty settlement documents. Wards do not take away anyone's rights. They provide an opportunity for us to have a stronger voice in discussion and decisions that affect us and our taonga. We celebrate the removal of legislative provisions that were racist, that have allowed a small percentage of the general public to deny us from having guaranteed representation in local government as tangata whenua, a minority in our own land. Councils all around us are voting yes. Wards are well on the way to becoming the norm. Tauranga, Taranaki, Taupo. It would be such an embarrassment to us and to our minister if we are the rohe who votes no. Surely we want to go down in history as having voted yes to diversity, yes to inclusiveness and yes to partnership. And so we support the motion for revocation and for councillors who are unsure to come to us for more discussion about why establishing wards is positive and future focused an enabler of diversity and decision making that is more reflective of the community we all serve and an enabler for more robust and sustainable decisions for the benefit of all peoples. In 1973, I'm told Te Reki Nui, who gifted the waka to Winika, to the city as a symbol of partnership. We've been waiting ever since. It is time. Tato katoa ki te hoi. Kia ora, Linda. Uh, we'll now hear from Andrea from the Runanga. Welcome. Tēnā koutou katsua, e te mana kura e ngā mema o te kainihira, uh, ki te tātoku matua ngā, nō Ngāti Maniaputo me Ngāti Mario o te wakao tainui ki te tāho tōki whaia nō Ngāti Pahawira o Ngāti Kāhungani. My name is Andrew Elliott, Huihepa, Chief Executive for Te Runanga o Kirikiriroa. 33 years ago, Te Runanga o Kirikiriroa was established by the late Māori Queen, Te Araki Nui Te Atairangi Kahu, in collaboration with the Mayor at the time, the late Sir Ross Jensen. As the only urban Māori authority to be mandated in this way, the original vision has remained unchanged. To increase illicit wellbeing and represent the voice of Mātāwaka, or those not tribally affiliated to this area, and Pacifica whenever and wherever possible. The way that Unanga was established states a simple fact, that Māori and Council working together was understood at the highest levels and seen as beneficial to all. Over time, Māori and Council have demonstrated that we can work well together. Nowhere is this more apparent than through the establishment of our Māngai Māori. I believe everyone around the table can agree the views and expertise that all Māngai Māori have brought to this table has greatly enhanced decision making. Just as importantly, the decision to establish Māngai Māori in October 2018 demonstrated to us the willingness of Council to work together. With the latest legislative changes, Council has the ability to be courageous again, like Malayne and others have stated, by giving due consideration to Māori wards. For us, Māori wards is a natural extension of the great work already carried out. It is why we chose option three on the 1st of April. 
In making your decision today, we ask two things. That is, one, Council remember the hard work, diligence and expertise that Māngai Māori have brought to this table and the benefits that have occurred in terms of enhanced decision making and active partnership. And two, Council be courageous in taking the next step by giving due consideration to Māori wards. In return, we commit to supporting Council in the necessary engagement processes so that within the very short times we have in front of us, the right decision on Māori wards can occur. Kia ora. Kia ora. We now welcome Warren Williams, Nati Mahanga representative. Atena koutou e te te kaina hira hira a huria e he huri ho no ngati mahanga ho a no ko Warren Williams toku ingo. Uh, I come here as a representative of ngati mahanga. Uh, and as the chair of Ngāuri o Mahanga Trust Board, that also represents three main marae of Ngāti Mahanga, and I also come with the support of my kaumātua. My brief kōrero was to provide feedback on key points outlined in the notice of revocation and motion for consideration of Māori wards. As stated in the Council report, dated 13th April 2020, authored by Becca Brook. For Ngāti Mahanga, we understand these key points as one, consideration of Māori wards and Māori representation. Two, strengthening meaningful representation and participation of Māori across all levels of council activity. This includes Māori wards and the continual role of Māngai Māori. Three, that the mana of the re recently adopted Hepo Manawa Order Strategy is upheld. That the council maintains a true commitment to collaborative and an engaging relationship with iwi and community. With those key points in mind, I would li now like to present formal feedback from Ngāti Mahanga. Firstly, our preference is that the motion for consideration must stay in its current wording in its entirety. In particular, point A, that the Council approves the establishment of Māori wards. Second, the consideration of Māori wards is in addition to the roles of Māngai Māori and not a replacement of. Three, that any rewording of the motion for consideration, in part or whole, does not diminish the roles of Māngai Māori and strengthens the addition of Māori wards for consideration. We recommend that a totality partnership and a mana enhancing process is adopted following this week's hui, so that this kaupapa progresses in a respectful way for all the totality partners. This applies especially to iwi community consultation, reporting and feedback. Lastly, Ngāti Mahanga acknowledged the support of its whānau and other hapū and marae that also support the addition of Māori wards. In closing, why is it important to Ngāti Mahanga to have Māori wards? As I look around this tepu, the points come very strong. One, to ensure Māori participation in local government decision-making uh, like the Hamilton City Council. Two, to enable Māori councillors to represent Māori interests in decision-making. And three, this is an opportunity for this kaunehira to be a role model to Aotearoa and not be relegated to the pages of history of the names next to Von Temsky and Bryce. Kia ora, Kia ora. Kia ora um, now we have Cheryl and Sunny Matinga from Nati Tamai Nupo. No, but for real. 
Ko Cheryl Martin nga tōku ingoa, uh, he maa ngai tēnei no te hapu o Ngāti Te Mainu Pō. Um, ko inei taku, uh, ko mātua taku koro, e whakatipu i au. Um, what I'm actually ready to do is move the chair from over there to here, because we're here, we're here. Now people are here and we're ready to sit at the decision-making table, because what we know is when we're not at this table, uh, we're on the menu, a eh, fun. <laughs> and so we're sitting here because we're really pissed off, actually, that um, there's no reflection of us in these decisions, there's no reflections of us in these policies, there's no reflections of us at the table. And as much as I love tips, I don't understand why her table, her seat's all the way over there, to be serious, honest. He manga ia mo iwi Māori, and she sits over there. Not right. But anyway, I wrote a script about two minutes ago. And what I want to say is, ko ngā raru nui i uwhia ki runga i te Māori, i muri mai te hainatanga o te tiriti o waitangi te tauko tai mano waru rau whātikau, he raru ka kitea tonutia i e nei rā. Ko taka ke mai mā tau te iwi Māori ki a whai ngā kaua i ngā tikanga o te pākeha, o te ini ana, o wai atu, o wai atu, i ngā tikanga o te Māori. Kwa roa rau atu wai tatari ana mātou ki a whakatīna natia, koutou i te mana o te tiriti. Kwa pukuriri katoa ki ngā kōrero, mana kore, ki ngā ture, mana kore, o tira ki ngō whakatau, mana kore. Wai ho mai, mā mātou ngā whakatau Māori e whakamana, mō mātou, mā mātou e ai ki a mātou. So, in short, just letting you know I'm sitting here. Kia ora. Thank you. Next. Tēnā koe e te tamani kāhui. Tamani pō sits here absolutely supporting other hapus that have gone before me and those who are coming after us and every other speaker that's that's spoken this morning um, today. So our our, our stance to Manipur absolutely support Māori wards. We support the rest of our iwi. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of moving forward, we have a number of people, whānau, that still live up in the city from Mairano, Ngāti Tamaini Pō, and um, we contribute also to this, to this, um, to the city in many forms. So for us, for a voice to be heard on the council, is, I guess, in respect of who we are and what we say and what we do in the future now and for our our mokopunas to come. Ah, later. Kia ora. I'd like to note to welcome Eric and Carolyn from Nati Wairere. It's all right, it's all good. Kia ora kōrua. Ana, tu tai mai ke te mea no ki a koe, tamu te tuakana. Hei hei, whakatuwhere e a tēnei wā i ke a tātou i tēnei wā. Kei te mihi ki te kaupapa, i karangi he tātou i tēnei wā. Kei te ngā hapu, ngā hapu, o tēnā, o tēnā waka, ku hui mai nei tēnei wā, kei te mi, kei tau o te tepu, ana, kei te mi i tēnei wā, i rotu, i tēnei whare, o koutou. Kau pāpauri mai i te rā kōrero o tame, a kuni ka whakamāra mai hi i te mūtika o te kōrero. Kau pāpauri mai i te rā kōrero o tame, a kuni ka whakamāra mai hi i te mūtika o te kōrero. 
Kuyurt Pini Ahu, Kuen Stene, Takutuakana. I'd like to start by voicing why it is disappointment on the vote on April Fool's Day, too. <laughs> to defer the discussion of possibility of appointing Māori wards in the future. We don't know when that time is. Unfortunately, the decision did not come with a guaranteed time frame, and Māori may actually be as uh, established, which meant nothing had really changed for us after that decision. We went right back to square one. <coughs> the decision showed no courage or leadership from our treaty partners. I also like to acknowledge the quality of some of the submissions presented that day and the unanimous acceptance of option three by all of the presenters. Why did he request that Māori awards be established under this council? Not under the next one, but under this one. Why did our mana whenua of Kirikiriro? We feel we do not have quality representation on council that gives Māori a solid voice. Instead, we still have people that make decisions on our behalf who think they know what's best for us. Wairere has a long-standing relationship in this space and contributions have largely gone unnoticed, especially pre-settlement. Shall we do the karakia? Shall we do the blessings? We sit with councils to pour for you in major events and the like. But when you really break it down, we do not have... Māori do not participate in the decision-making. Wairere does not have a voice. Instead, we have been and still are relegated to a subordinate role under those elected to manage the city. Ever since Raupatu Atupuna have been fighting to, main a f to maintain a foothold in the city. They held the space for us. They fought the battles with local governments, with the councils, with anybody really. They made compromises and copped abuse from all sides just to hold the ground. They didn't have the educated army of Rangatahi to follow them like my generation does have now. And here we are. The package might look a little bit different than this time, but the content is still the same. But not having a voice and fighting for a voice came at a huge cost. I acknowledge the effort and contributions of our tūpuna uh, that they gave to the city and the legacy that they left my generation. Ironically, yeah, ironically, we, we currently find ourselves in the embarrassing situation where the voice of white edit today is delivered through a private company contracted to Hamilton City Council. That situation is totally <coughs> unacceptable. We do not want to be absorbed in the large population where our mana is diminished through council processes. White Edit's co papa is to Manaki people in the Aorohi. That means addressing issues that you guys actually uh, talk about and you, you fellas actually throw Fakaro around. Issues like culture, housing, water, transportation, education, health. Those are our kopapa. Those are some of our takere. That's our interpretation of manaki or part of. Why Edi should not be debating as a treaty partner for the right to have a say in this city? The Fari sits on our traditional lands. It should not take a bill in Parliament to initiate change. Being a treaty partner is reason enough to effect change, and the change should, be, should have happened years ago. And the God's willing, it will happen today. Actually, what would help White Eddie would be... Actually, we just want to know what councils actually see the role of mana whenua in Kirikiriro. Maybe someone would give some clarification on that point. I've never heard it myself. Fana would understand better what council's expectations are of mana whenua. We might not agree on your view, but it would take a good start. We would make a good starting point for a discussion. Sounds reasonable. <sighs> now, Bo Mano Ora and Mangai Māori are not the miracle cure that some seem to think it is. Nor sh should they be seen as a long-term long solution. It was never intended for that purpose. Both can be enhanced by Māori representation of the council. <coughs> the motion makes no mention of retaining uh, Māngai Māori, and we, we would be doing a, a disservice to this city by not maintaining them. My final concern about backlash also, that may have been targeted at Māngai Māori reps and city council staff as a consequence of the last vote. Please note in my mihi, I refer to this, to this house as your house. Tēnei whare o koutou. Until Wairi, uh, why did they are welcomed into this house in a proper manner? We stand on the outside and not by choice. 
Historically and currently, we have not and do not sit with our treaty partners equally in this forum. The future is here, the future demands change, especially from the draconian processes and mistakes of a bygone era. There is only one decision that will take us into the future, and that is a vote for Māori representation on this council. But that requires courage and genuine commitment from both treaty partners. I just want to finish off by saying uh, I, I found a little, what's called it? But it's actually from a Pākehā. And it says, coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress, but working together is success. Henry Ford. Can <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we will now hear from Mokoro Gillett and Hone Thompson from Nati Hawa. Tiki Te kaunihera, a ho kākari o te wā, tēnei mihi ana, mihi ana, tēnā koutou. E te iwi, tēnā tātou i hare mai nei, a ki te whakatakato o tātou whakāro, tēnei ka mihi, tēnei ka mihi, huri no tēnā tātou katu. Kia. E te koro matua, nā mema, te kaunihera o tēnei uh, uh, taone o kirikiriro, tēnā koutou. Ko hori tami ana hau, e kānohe mō te tumuaki o te kingi tanga, me kingi tūheitia, me Ngāti Ahoa nui tonu e Paimari. Paimari. I stand before you in the shadow of my ancestor, Wurimu Tami Hana, the kingmaker. My name is Hone Thompson. My father is Anaru Thompson, the current tumuaki. As a loyal servant to the kingi tanga, I bring a message of kotahi tanga and goodwill from King Tūheitia. The King looks forward to your deliberation today. Councillors, the motion before you is a simple yet significant one. On first glance, it may seem a small matter, but on closer inspection, this is an historic moment for us all. Decades from now, your children and your children's children will remember the decision you took this day. Will the record show that you decided to begin a new era of governance and partnership with Māori? or park the decision for another day. I'm not saying this is easy, nothing worthwhile ever is. As Martin Luther King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. This is one of those times. This is a moment to take a stand. This is the moment to heal the wounds of the past. This is the moment to begin a new era of governance that reflects treaty partnership. On behalf of my tupuna and the people of Ngāti Hoa, I urge you to make the right call for our joint future. Mahi tahi kātū, wehe wehe kahinga, nō reira te nā koutou, te nā koutou, te nā hoki tātou kātou.
Kia ora Thank you. Thank you, everyone. For the record, please may I note that we received, and it was attached to the appendices, a written submission from Dave Colhoun, Chairperson of the Commission for Justice, Peace and Araha, and Stevie Sansfield. And so they are part of the record for this meeting today. Before we get into the business of the revocation, what's on the table, and what's, what's being proposed, I propose since we've been sat for a while, a comfort stop. So that will um, um, help us to be more comfortable through the decision making. So we will have 10 minutes. Please get yourself a coffee or get comfortable and we'll be back. Thank you. you cold water? It's freezing.
ding the bell or do something. See? Kia ora everyone, we're going to start back now, oh, please. i that twice. Can you whistle? Excuse me, everyone. We're about to cap off. Whistle. Boy. Okay, everyone. We need to move to the next phase of today. Just need to get this up. Okay. I want to I want to talk to the motion please and make sure that everyone in this room understands where we're heading today ahead of the ultimate decision on May the 19th revoking a decision by council is, is an unusual move and it doesn't often happen but I'm actually very pleased that our council is back here today around the table it's, it's the right thing to do, and many of us knew that. Let's get the motion up for, on the screen, if we would. And then this motion has been proposed by me and seconded by Councillor Hamilton, but not exclusively, because others have shaped this motion from the beginning. There was a lot of conversation. As you can see, the motion approves in principle the establishment of Māori wards in time for the 2022 election. It includes community engagement starting tomorrow, with the final decision on Māori wards to be made on May the 19th. Let me be quite clear, when I talk about engagement, I'm not talking about polls or counting numbers, I'm talking about courageous community conversations. I understand Councillor Bunting has suggested a slight alteration to what Councillor Hamilton and I proposed, and that the majority of councils support this change. This change would see the wording of agreeing in principle to consider. This process will remain unchanged. The decision will still occur on 19th of May. Personally, I was happy with the original words to approve in principle, and I do want you to hear that. I would have stuck there. However, as a team, Council has worked really hard to move to a space where we can have a limited period of community engagement and deliver a decision for Māori on the 19th of May. And you will hear more from me personally as to where my heart and my view sits in my debate. However, based on the majority of all councillors agreeing to the alteration as mover, I've agreed to alter the motion, which is up there, and Councillor Hamilton has agreed to second it. And I can do so with the willing majority of the council. And I believe I have the majority. Councillors, you're willing to speak out if you th do not think that to be the case. Okay, so those are what we're debating today. So the first decision is for council to revoke the original, the original motion of April the 1st, as it appears there before. The second decision will be for the new motion for consideration. And we will be taking a vote independently on both, although, of course, they are actually interwoven and linked. We will, however, be debating the issue once, both the revocation and the new motion. Okay? So the motion is up there, the new motion is up there, the other motion to revoke is up there. We will go to the debate. Unless there's questions for clarity. Yeah, Councillor Pascoe. Councillor Maxine was ahead of me. Councillor Matt. Uh, it, just with regard to um, what's on the board, there's a motion and a motion. Is that what's intended? One Can is the motion to be revoked and one is the motion to be ex exchanged. 
The first um, one technically isn't. Um, <coughs> it's a revocation motion. It's slightly different, but yeah. The top motion is the one that was made on um, when we didn't have the numbers for the other outcome. It was the one that we unanimously agreed on April the 1st. No longer putting up and only have what you're putting up, which then will remove the, the confusion. Yeah, I can, I can, but it, they are both parts of the process. We do have to revoke one to get the other one in place. That's why they're both there, as I understand it, Becca. Uh, no. So but what, we can scroll okay, now. Okay, I understand. Huh? So yeah. now let's scroll up. So we are only looking at the proposed, and this is where I've been quite clear that the majority have asked me to consider a small alteration to the word "consider" instead of "in principle." And I'll talk to that in my debate. So we will now take any other questions for clarity, or we will go to the debate. Um, sorry, Rob, yes. Thank you. Look, I've got questions. Uh, 11.24 today, we received the draft consultation agreement, yeah. and, um, and it appears to me that it has been quite rushed. But I wondered if there's a run sheet which sets out what the proposed program is in the consultation around advertising, around ways and means by which uh, submitters can um, make submissions um, and, um, and how they will be collected and whether we will have a hearings uh, on those submissions in the same format that we follow for mm. all of the other consultations you, that we undertake. My understanding is that it will be heard by all council at the meeting on um, the ni uh, 19th. That's, so that's the process. You, every All councillors will be involved in that, that final decision-making day. Dan, do, do you want to talk to the concert or, or Natalie, Sean, who, I'm not sure which one. You want to rumble, I think. Sure, I can answer, answer that. So in terms of the engagement um, process, so that's due to if the motion is successful, that would start tomorrow. So given the relatively short notice, um, it's not a, uh, we're focusing on the um, strategies that we can roll out fairly quickly. So it will go up on our website tomorrow, now have your say page. So the um, online engagement um, document, and that's where we expect to get the majority of feedback through that page. Um, we'll be promoting that through social media, um, through our um, usual um, stakeholder uh, lists, uh, also through PR and media stories, we'll be promoting through that. Uh, we'll also have hard copies of the engagement document at our council facilities, libraries, um, front desk down here, etc. cetera. Uh, we'll also provide collateral for EMs to um, provide um, to your um, contacts if you want to encourage um, your sort of stakeholders to um, have their say. Uh, they'll also be supported with some newspaper advertising as well. So th that's essentially the so, campaign. So it's more than just a targeted type consultation? consultation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you're confident um, that in the three weeks, I think it's three weeks, that you will be able to um, uh, confidently come back to us and, and confirm that the consultation has been as robust as it would have been for any other uh, consultation that we might have undertaken. That might have been, that generally would have been over a longer period than three weeks. Uh, well, it's, it, it is a shorter um, engagement period, um, so that does have its challenges, but I think the, um, I think there is good level of engagement from the public on this issue, so I think we will get a fairly um, strong response for this engagement. And just one final oh, question. we'll just follow up with another comment. On so that. the um, so uh, everything that Sean said, um, I believe that um, while condensed, um, we, we've done our best and we'll pre we'll present a um, effective communication tool, but consultation tool. We also have to have it all done and dusted by the 21st of May at the back end. 21st of May. Yes. Yes. 21st of May at the back end um, to take advantage of the transitional provisions in the Local Government Act. So I, understand, I understand that. That's um, part of my concern. So in terms of the deliberations of the, the hearings that we will hold uh, to give the submitters who wish to present an opportunity to present, that will be on the 19th of, of, um, uh, um, 19th of May? Yes. 
And will there be sufficient time if any directions are given to staff for a, um, a, and a, and a wrap up to, to, to uh, be able to uh, report back by the 21st when that presumably that meeting needs to be held? And the decision made? No, so the, the meeting um, to make a decision is on the 19th of May. So essentially, given the sort of truncated time frame, it uh, will essentially use the public forum on the 19th of May for you to hear verbally from people that wish to speak. So it will be treated um, in in that way. But you will still be um, asked to make a decision on on that day on the 19th. And just the other point to note, Councillor Pascoe, is that there is actually no requirement under the legislation to consult at all. So we're making a decision here to ensure that we do hear from our community, but the legislation allows an avenue for no consultation. So we've done everything we can, which is over and above what the legislation said, um, to ensure that we get the best feedback we can to enable the selected group to make the most informed decision on that day. Oh, that surprises me that we can do this without consultation, but uh, if that's the law, that's the law. Thank you. Yeah. And just just noting that the timeline, just noting that the timeline is is um, contingent on well, it's set by the minister with the government change, and so that's what we have, and that's what we'll use. But you can talk to that in your debate, Councillor Pascoe. Any further questions for clarity? Oh, sorry, there is. Angela is on Zoom, and Angela has a question. Thank you, um, and thanks everyone. My apologies, I'm not in the chamber. I have another separate transport hearing tomorrow in which I've had three days to read uh, nearly 800 pages, so I've, it's been easier for me to, to zoom in. But thank you for every uh, for all the presentations. Uh, just a question, Sean. Um, there's nothing in the report about budget, so do you have the budget to be able to do this um, quick engagement? Uh, yes, so the, um, the, there's a relatively low cost to the online and the social. Uh, there is some cost for the um, media, which is it's less than $5,000, so we can cover that from our existing budgets. Okay, thank you. And um, so just to confirm, following Councillor Pascoe's questionings, there's definitely no formal hearing. As you said, Sean, it's going to be, we're going to sort of do a little bit of a hybrid in the public forum on that day. Yes. Yep, okay. And the 21st of May, I tried to find out where that deadline date was, and this is, my question is certainly not to extend anything lengthy, but if we were to have a, an extra few days or an, an extra week, What's the consequences of that, and where did the 21st of May come from? Um, the 25th, the, uh, Councillor O'Leary, the 21st of May is actually uh, enshrined in legislation, so there was an amendment act that came forward that uh, uh, re repealed and changed a number of the criteria within the Local Government Act and the Local Electoral Act in terms of Māori wards, and that introduced a transitional period to enable you to go to um, and make the decision without the various changes. and. It means you could do it outside the representation, the standard representation um, cycle, and that expires yeah. on the uh, 21st of May. So we have to have it down and dusted. Otherwise, we can't uh, make the decision until the following term, is my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. That's all the questions. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Any further questions? No. We move into debate. As I said earlier, revoking a, a decision made by Council is an unusual move, but I'm pleased, really pleased, that we're all back here together discussing this issue and working actually as a team to try and get the job done. As Mayor of this city, I'm very well aware how fraught this issue has been over the last couple of weeks. People hold very passionate views for all sides of the debate, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But views expressed in an ill-formed or divisive way will create and exacerbate rifts in our city, and I've seen how that can happen. Since April the 1st, when we first discussed, discussed Māori wards here in the chamber, there have been some harsh and hurtful words spoken all round, sometimes spoken to me, sometimes spoken at me, and sometimes spoken about me. But that's absolutely fine, because that shows how strongly people feel. And this is what it looks like to have courageous conversations. 
there have also been some very deeply personal and considered views shared with me, and I'm grateful for that. I'm also very grateful for what I have heard today, because I'm now more convinced than ever that unless our city has open, brave conversations and steps bravely towards Māori representation that is meaningful, we will not be able to realise the full potential of Hamilton, because what is good for Māori is good for our city. I've said that before, and that is a fact. So now is the time for us to take that passion that I've seen myself and continue on a journey of much greater unity and much greater partnership. There is strength in unity, and that is what will serve our future well. I support Māori wards personally. As Waikato Tainui has acknowledged, I was a key supporter in the proposal of Māori wards when I was chair of the Re Waikato Regional Council. And the sky has not fallen in, as someone bravely said earlier. <laughs> and Māori representation has improved the quality of that council. Um, and to mention Tipa Mahuta, Kataraina, and before her Timoti as councillors who have done so. But I've, as I've always said, and I said again, I said this in on April the 1st, I was uncomfortable without mo about introducing Māori wards without an element of community engagement. It's not a poll. It's not a referendum in disguise. It's a matter of talking with the public about why this is so important. And I haven't changed my view in that. So while I personally would have been pleased to continue with an in-principle decision today, which is a little stronger than support, I will support this motion to move the issue forward in a, in a positive way. It will enable conversations in our city. It will provide greater clarity around the issue and the timing of the decision. It will enable all voices to be heard. And I'm pretty certain, after what we've heard here today, we will hear Māori voice loud and clear through that process. So it is that co those conversations that I will hope will help the wider community understand representation and understand why it is so important. So this motion may not be what everybody most wants, and I've heard that in, in the corridor today, but it will enable us to go out tomorrow, and I hope as many people as possible can get involved in the process. Yes, it is a compressed process but we have a timeline that we have to work within. A final decision on Māori wards will be made on May the 19th, and we will have talked to our community about that, that decision. That's important to me. I have made my personal views clear, and I will leave it there. But I hope that from what I have said to you today, you know where my heart is, and I look forward to coming back around this table with my colleagues on, eight, on May the 19th. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton. Thanks, Mayor Paula. I'm going to stand today because it's a special day. Uh, tēnā tātou te whare, called Ryan Hamilton Tuku Ingoa. Nothing I said in my previous debate today uh, changes. I wanted to go out to the community uh, with, with a view to engage and bring them with us. But what it what the motion didn't do was it failed to provide a certainty and a definitiveness to you in terms of Māori wards, and it caused some pain, and for that I apologise. But today's motion keeps that hope alive. Proverbs 13.12 said, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And today we, we renew that hope, and the tide is turning. <coughs> In the Christian worldview, God reconciled humanity through Christ. And ironically, over the Easter weekend, I couldn't reconcile the decision that I had made. It wrestled with, with my soul in a way that I didn't give it permission. And, uh, and that's when Mira and Paul and I reached out and re reconvened and said, no, this is, this is too important. There's something spiritual here that we need to acknowledge. I accept status quo is not working for Māori. And they're overrepresented in all the wrong ways. These seats are not a silver bullet either, but we acknowledge that it's an opportunity to do more and to do better together. To our māngai, and I'll, I'll incorporate Muna in this, um, esteem them. They've been through a hard road on this and they've been battered. 
they walk, uh, they're bridging two worlds, and they've just about had to do the splits, and Norm's actually not that flexible. <laughs> uh, so I just want to acknowledge the work that they're doing at bringing these two cultures together and uh, in a manner-enhancing way. And, and because of them and their rapport with council, uh, certainly I'll speak on my behalf, that's why we're here today. Today I've heard you. I've listened to your cry, to your pain, to your aspirations. Last time I said, let's bring the community with us. That remains my request today. We have 34 days to do it. Let's do it together. If you walk this with me, I will walk this with you. Tihe Māori ora. Anyone else for debate? Councillor Thompson. Tēnā tato katoa. Um, thank you. Thank you again for coming and speaking. Uh, for those of you uh, who are back um, for the second meeting and for those of you who are here for the first time, thank you. Um, there's something that feels a bit wrong about uh, you coming and, and sitting here and persuading us why there should be Māori wards. Um, and I think many of you articulated why that feels wrong, uh, because as Indigenous people of this country, as Tangata Whenua, uh, as partners of Te Tiriti, you should have a voice at this table by right. Um, but um, in saying that, so uh, I am incredibly grateful to colleagues for revisiting this decision. Um, Last meeting, when it was asked, what, what did you vote on? Um, and and it, we said, well, to, to not establish Māori wards this term, there was a huge feeling of disappointment. But I think also what I sensed was a feeling of tiredness of people who have fought for a long time uh, for what they believe is right. And unfortunately, uh, I mean, as you've said also, this is only an intermediate step and there's still a fight ahead, but this is a step in the right direction. And so um, I, I feel like today there's a renewed energy uh, in the room and, and that's really positive and we're moving forward in a positive direction. So thank you to my colleagues. And uh, while I would like to have said, hey, let's make this a uh, decision that we agree to the establishment of wards in principle. Um, I also uh, respect that um, you remain open-minded, open-hearted, and that you just need more time to have a, a corridor with the wider community of Kirikiriroa, and um, I, I really um, respect that. And I'm looking forward to the next three weeks of engagement and I encourage everybody to speak to those around you, encourage them to submit, encourage people to participate. The real decision will be made, well, the, the final decision will be made on the 19th of May. And my hope is that on the 19th of May when we make a decision that enables diversity an indigenous Māori voice around the table, a decision that honours te yes. and can only strengthen our city. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Councillor Pascoe. Thank you, Chair, and kia ora. Thank you uh, today for your very passionate and knowledgeable speeches. Um, I have listened to them all. I did support, along with my colleagues, on the 1st of April, uh, that to continue discussion with our community. Um, at no time did I, and I believe at that time my colleagues, believe that we were closing the door uh, for Maori wards, as was suggested today by Benjamin and by Vicky. More, more than 76% of our resident population do not associate themselves with iwi, and I am concerned to date their views have been overlooked and a rush consultation now could further potentially isolate the majority of Hamilton residents. The partnership of the treaty involves us all working together. The timeline to make this decision is being driven by statute, not by our community making a decision together. 
I am continually, I, I, am, I continue to be concerned that we, that our uh, staged approach to achieving a good community outcome in the short period um, may not be achieved and therefore I'm, I'm uh, concerned that even after three weeks uh, we might not get sufficient feedback for us to make an informed decision. And remember, that is our role as leaders, is to consider and make informed decisions. Excuse me, it's time for a respectful listen to the debate, no matter how you feel. Thank you, Rob. Councillor Van Oosten. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honour. Um, uh, thank you also to um, the speakers here today for your passion um, and your wisdom. Uh, I see you and I hear you. Two weeks ago, um, I moved a motion to introduce Māori wards for the 22 local body elections and was supported by three other brave councillors. While I knew it was the right thing to do and the time was right for it, sadly it wasn't enough on the day to convince the Mayor and the other councillors. <laughs> they were concerned, and rightfully, perhaps now, um, that option three would not include going back to the community to consult further, but that the motion relied on our recent here poor Manawa order feedback. Uh, and in doing that, we hid nothing about the council's aspiration for increasing Māori representation through the unity uh, The time um, that, uh, that, that was passed between now and, and then um, has allowed us all to reflect on the decision of the 1st of April, to talk more amongst ourselves and to talk with others and to, to seek counsel. For me, that has meant looking for possible compromise and for being open to it myself. Reflecting on what I know from my years of experience in the union movement about the importance of engagement, the value that a shared understanding brings, and about winning the hearts and minds of the public is important but also the natural justice of simply having your say. Uh, I agree now that the wider community engagement is the best way forward, and for that reason, I've signed the notice of motion. And while I would like to remain with the original wording, I recognise that a slight wording change is the only available pathway that we have to Māori wards for the next election. Um, that's something I look, I'm very committed to, um, to continuing to fight for. I believe that uh, we have real benefit at the table when all of our views are heard and we all have a strong voice. This is a time now that we need your leadership, though also those in the gallery today. And I talked earlier about Māori walking in two worlds, and that's what we need you to do alongside of us now. So I ask, uh, I ask for that assistance and that help. Uh, be strong, be brave, be steadfast. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Oh, right. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Southgate. Yesterday, uh, I was uh, I was moved by uh, Hamilton Girls High School submission to the long term plan 
uh, a school with a 40% Māori and Pacifica population proudly and confidently growing and now wanting to, in partnership with the government and this council, uh, create and share new facilities such as a sports hub and swimming pool with the community. A head girl uh, full of confidence addressing us, a school embracing aspiration and bursting at the seams with young Māori and Pacifica women who will be leaders in our community. I have no doubt some of them will be sitting around this table, Māori awards or not, nothing will stop them. I can't help but contrast that with the message I'm getting today about Māori wards, because it seems to me that these kids, I know some of them at Hamilton Girls High School, they're going to smash it anyway. And I'm convinced that that's what they believe. I couldn't help but wonder, isn't that at the end of the day a more powerful path to self-determination? Wouldn't the message you send them be more powerful if you said, kids, you can take the city by storm and get elected onto this council. Instead, you're telling them, we'll get two wards and you can stand for those. In other words, you're not good enough for the others. Second best to me. I've heard a lot today about a lack of courage. I've heard about Māori being silenced, about exclusion. Well, where's your courage? There's nothing stopping you from standing for council. Do you think it's easy? Have you put your heads above the parapet and had a go? Have you knocked on a thousand doors? Have you tried to Excuse me. Have you he tried to convince Excuse people you are me. worth justifying their, their vote? Just pause a minute, please. Jeff, Jeff, just please pause. I know that passions are high in the audience. I understand that. But this day has been run with respect. You don't. No, uh, you do not have to agree with his view. But what I'm saying is, can we have the debate without interruption, please? I'm asking you for that respect to have the debate without interruption. I'm not asking you to agree with any statement that a councillor makes. Carry on, please, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor Paula. If we proceed down the route uh, for, for my rewards, ultimately fine. But all I'm saying, all I've ever said, is it may not be the only way particularly with the changing electorate we have and a new, more representative voting system in STV, there may be a better way. Harder, but better for Māori in the long run. I'm just posing that as a question. If I'm wrong in your eyes, I accept that. And if ultimately it is felt that Māori wards are the best way to go, fine. I don't support the revocation because I think we're flip-flopping. We're bowing to pressure from an angry group and in doing so, I don't think we're doing the right thing by the wider public. Two weeks ago, this council made a decision by eight to four to not try to push through Māori wards in a hurry, reacting to government legislation. Why? Because we felt it wouldn't give the public sufficient chance to digest and express their views. And secondly, we expressly set up a process, hippo manua ora, to give this community a chance to have a comprehensive discussion on race relations in the city. Can I remind you, this was going to be a visionary approach. It was going to be groundbreaking. It was agreed upon by both the council and Māori stakeholders. Through a courageous process, we were going to get to the bottom of race relations in Hamilton. Instead of handling things in isolation, we were going to do it holistically, because the other ways didn't work. No more arguments about Captain Hamilton or street names. No more ad hocery. Instead of rushing, well, you signed up for this. Instead of rushing to outcomes, we were going to lead the country in having brave conversations as a whole community about race relations. Then we would be in the position to make decisions. Well, that's all gone out the window. That's fine. If we approve this today, we might as well chuck that strategy in the bin because it'll be worthless because we preempted it. Um, and before we've even had the decency to discuss the submissions of a thousand plus people who took the time and effort to give their views on that strategy, before we've even considered what they said, here's a motion to overturn the decision of 14 days ago and rush through consultation on Māori wards in Hamilton. Do you want to take the community on this journey or not? Is that important to you? Because I don't know how you're going to do it in three weeks. If that doesn't matter to everyone here, that's fine, but it matters to me. So my message is, to my colleagues, do the right thing by the whole community, not just the angry ones on either side. If you really believe in it creating a cohesive strategy for this city 
to races to live in harmony in the future, see the Hippo Manawa Ora policy through. Have the courageous conversations that we promised. You can't have those in three weeks. Take the time to have the courageous conversations that we promised. Councillor Bunting. I mean, doing. <clears throat> Call Mark Bunting, Taka um, I'm a bit of a fatalist, and I found a, a really cool little um, meme yesterday, and it said, Whakama te mana um, o te tangata. We assume uh, positive intentions, and, um, and we respect the mana of the people. Some people call me childish. Some people call me naive. Some people will call that an insult. I wear that as a badge of honour. Koru Dave calls me many things. Alvina calls me worse. <laughs> Today someone called me a liar. I don't share that view. I've always believed that people are good. There's a book, I don't know if you remember it, we were made to read it at school called Lord of the Flies. And that assumes that when things get tough, only the toughest will survive. People will destroy each other until only the strongest survive. There's only one standing, one wins, the other lose. I call BS on that book. I believe, like the Dalai Lama does, that people are in fact good. When times get tough, we will pull together to keep each other alive as a species. People are good. We don't agree all the time, but people are good. Whakanui te mana o te tangata. And when you look around the room with that lens, the world's a lot nicer place. Some people call it Ubuntu. I just call it community, and I love this community in every way I can. That belief has been tested from time to time, more recently, uh, very much so tested. Last week, I voted for consultation. I don't believe and never have in putting electoral matters through without proper consultation, plain and simple. The electoral system, I believe, belongs to the entire community, not just the people around this table. When we're making that decision, it belongs to the community. My vote last week was not a vote against Māori seats at all, quite to the contrary. I had great hope that Heipo Manawa Ora was our genuine chance as a community to have some really good kōrero rero and get this right. <coughs> I saw that Māori representation was one of the first and most vital parts of that and to create a glorious, open-handed, big-hearted community who heard each other's stories, who spoke strongly, <coughs> who listened bravely to everyone and learned from everyone's stories to create this great community that's based on totality, that marches forward and welcomes people from the 160 cultures who live here now. I believed, believed we could do that together. But because of what I believe is fear and mistrust, we didn't travel that path. And here we are, angry with each other and a little bit hurt. Some people call me childish, some people call me naive, some people will call that an insult. I wear that like a badge of honour. I believe our community is ready for this debate. I reckon it's going to go okay. I believe in our community. Personally, I believe the community will be fine with this. I assume positive intentions. It is a work in progress. For the discussion, Yes, you need paddlers on both sides of the waka. Most of the speakers today have made the point it's been paddling around and around in circles on one side for far too long. And I tend to agree. If we want this waka to forge ahead, we must allow paddlers on both sides to paddle. I represent the community, and that's hard. All of the community, and that's hard. But please, let's take the community with us on this waka. Milena asked us to be courageous. I ask you to be courageous. Give this this three weeks. Give the community their say. It's not three years consultation, it's three weeks. Hang in there, we'll get there. Elvina said it's time to stop being scared. I agree. I ask you not to be scared as we walk together through the community response over the next three weeks. We will get there. Hannah said it's not if, it's when. I think that when will be in three weeks, but again, we must take the community with us together. 
It's not for me, it's not for you, it's for us. We will get there. I represent this community, all the community. Let's take this community with us for the next three weeks. I've heard you. I want to hear everyone. People are good. Assume the best. Linda is right. The sky will not fall in the next three weeks. Whakanui te mana o te tangata. Kia ora. Councillor O'Leary. Thank you, um, Mayor Falkgates. I'm not going to try and be poetic or anything else. I'm just going to be uh, quite straightforward in, in my comments. Um, I watched the debate uh, through the media of the a recent decision and I watched it on social media. I didn't comment. And what I learned from that was because I didn't comment, um, uh, the, the, basically the space was filled by other people and uh, I found some of that comment ugly and I found some of it disrespectful. And I'm talking about also on my Facebook page over Easter when I put the post on without uh, my own personal views on why I made the decision I did, did the other day. Uh, that was my bad, basically, because what I saw on uh, some of that media and social media were people were filling in the void for me. They were telling me why they think I made the decision that I made. And they're wrong, quite frankly. Um, I didn't view the previous decision that we made on whether I personally, as an elected representative, support Māori wards because that's, for me, not what that was about. It was about, for me, and as I debated back then, the lack of consultation for my West Ward for the people who elected me to represent them. And this is a significant decision, and everyone deserves to have um, their voice heard. And again, I, I just want to... There's been some incredible speakers in the gallery today, and I have listened to every single one of them. Um, the reason I said that some of the commentary was ugly is that for me, and yes, I am a Pākehā, but I am a girl from Porirua, and I lived in a very rough little town, I think it's now a city now, and this Māori, the world of um, Cook Island and Māori and Tongan and Samoan was my world, it was my family and how I grew up. So I was... Yeah, I, I found that the, the void that I left uh, and, and that was filled by the public and, and many of the people that don't know me at all, quite, um, quite insulting actually. So I'm very comfortable based on my, um, and I've been very consistent here based on my previous debate, that this is going up for consultation. Now I understand that in the past, right throughout New Zealand, when we have gone to ask the public, it's been through a referendum or a poll. And that means a piece of paper goes to people that never engage with the city, that never engage with elected members and get a tiny bit of a, of a story and then they're asked for the decision. So it's always weighted, uh, I believe, a, a bit unfairly. So I understand your concerns around that. But that's not what this is, and I think a previous speaker has um, said that. This is engagement and consultation. So I am expecting you to rally um, your people like you've done so well today, and you did, I think it was last week, it feels like such a long time ago, actually, um, and putting in those uh, pieces of feedback and submissions so that your voice is heard as well. I appreciate it. So I'm very comfortable in supporting the motion. Thank you. Councillor McPherson. Kia ora koutou katoa. Firstly, I'd like to tautoko the speakers uh, in the public forum at the start. That was a great start to the meeting. Also, particularly the speeches that have been made by my friends on the left here, starting with Councillor Bunty, the furthest left, and then Councillor Sarah after that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not impressed about the furthest left part. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks ago, Council, I believe, made a mistake. I accept and respect that not everyone thought it was a mistake. 
but I think that the flack that council copped and council laws copped uh, was justifiable in terms of the way the public perceived the decision. This motion will begin to address that mistake and start to remove some of that hurt. I'm confident that after a little more community engagement and the final decision on 19th of May, more of that hurt will be addressed. This isn't, I believe, as my colleague Councillor Robb said, a rushed consultation. The last part of it, yes, is only three weeks. That consultation and debate has been going on, we've heard, for decades. If, um, even my own term in council, I've debated that three times, starting in the year 2000, um, and lost each time. This time, third time lucky. <laughs> um, in the last two weeks, there's been a considerable reflection on the future of this council, both from within the council and outside the council. And that's not just the council laws around this table, that's all the staff that work for us. I've probably had more feedback from staff and our organisation on this subject than I have on any other subject in my time on council. And I, it's, I'm pleased that they are debating that. Um, in the spirit, though, of compromise and moving forward, the new wording has come forward. It's not my preferred wording. I would have liked something stronger, but everyone knew my views anyway, and it's not about me. It's about, um, as they say in Pākehā institutions like this, politics is the art of being able to count, and I'm having trouble teaching Councillor Ewan that, but he's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> with it, with that new wording, I believe, using the words of one of our presenters before, we're going to have a lot more brave allies after this debate than we had two weeks ago. The community engagement will be an important, well, sorry, be an opportunity for public education. It won't, as the Mayor has said, be a popularity contest. That will come in the elections next year. <laughs> I, I, re <laughs> I remind my fellow councillors, to, that today is not the final decision day. You don't have to be scared of the vote now. It is, however, a step that we need to take to get Māori wards considered. If you vote against this today, they will not be considered in the life of this parliament. That's not our choice, that's the law. We can't do anything about that here. So I say to councillors Jeff and Rob, with all due respect, vote for some community consultation within the life of this council on this subject. You will have the chance, if you still hold the same view, on the 19th of May to vote against. But allow it to go out, support it going out for consultation. Thank you. Councillor Naidu Rauf, I'm so pleased to see you here today because I know you've been really unwell over the last few days. Thank you, thank you. Um, the last vote um, on the 1st of April, I talked about and I stressed that um, we need to educate people to take the wider community with us on this journey because I talked about my own experience and how if you leave people behind, um, it can lead to um, a worse outcome. Um, it was not a vote uh, for or against Maori wards. Uh, in, all, in all honesty, personally, I um, advocate for fair representation. Um, and what I've been, uh, what I constantly remind myself of is that I'm here to represent the people of Hamilton everyone in Hamilton. Um, and I too think that our community is ready to embrace our diversity. They voted me here, after all. <laughs> um, so on that note, I will support the new motion. Uh, and I hope that this gives us an opportunity to engage, to educate, and to hear from the community. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, you know, going out and talking to people, I think it was three or four times when I spoke to people on the street, they asked me if Maori wards had anything to do with Waikato Hospital. And that's the level of understanding that we're dealing with. 
people don't understand. And I think that having this time will give us the opportunity to actually tell people, the wider community, to educate people that this is, <laughs> this is what wards actually mean. Um, and to just to finish, uh, I want uh, to read a couple of quotes um, from Nelson Mandela. The first one says, it is not our diversity which divides us. It is not our ethnicity or religion or culture that divides us. Since we have achieved our freedom, there can only be one division amongst us between those who cherish democracy and those who do not. And the second quote is, during my lifetime, I have dedicated myself to the struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons together in harmony and with equal opportunities, sorry, live together. Uh, it is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve, but if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. So I think it's really, really important that we take everyone on this journey with us, and this three, week, three weeks will give us um, a chance to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Kish. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mayor Paula. Um, well, first of all, I, I, I acknowledge the passion of the people who've come here today and spoken to us. Over the last couple of weeks, like many around this table, I've reflected on a number of the critical issues that we have discussed. I found a lot of the feedback that I've had uh, fascinating because um, uh, I haven't made anybody happy. Um, and it always makes me think that actually if I haven't made anybody happy, Maybe I'm somewhere in the centre. Because what upsets a lot of um, Pākehā Kiwis is I say, actually, we do have a partnership with uh, Māori. And I believe in the rule of law, and I believe that we entered into an agreement, and I believe we entered into a partnership. My area for debate and concern was whether or not Manga Māori as a form of a voice around this table was the most meaningful. What I've actually realised is that's actually not for me to decide. It's for Māori to decide. The reality is this. We've got nothing to be scared about having Māori voice around this table. Young people like Hannah, they impress me. She's impressed me both times. And I thought to myself, if she was sitting over side or opposite me or next to me, I would be the one better for it. So she is very welcome around this table. And so is my Manga Māori partners. I may not always agree, and I'll speak more about that in a minute, but when Ollie comes into the room, he has my attention. He has mana. So does my, uh, so does my, so so do you. Every, you know. So I I really wanted to make that point. The other critical point I would say is actually we have huge challenges to look forward to. They are significant, and I think the decision-making process will be enhanced with a Māori voice. But I warn, as I warn every elected member, the reality is when you're around this table and you see the conflicting, complex nuances in the decision-making proce uh, process, it is challenging, but I welcome the input. Uh, and if we are together on this, the discussion and the outcome will be more positive. So I say, let's go out and consult. Let's encourage everybody to have their say. And then ultimately, we'll come back here in May and we'll have to make the decision. So I encourage everybody to passionately ask people to come and submit to us, engage with us. Tell us what you think. Um, 
but I'm now convinced, and I have gone back and forth, and I have to say, and Councillor Ryan would often say to me, there's a legal aspect, Ewan, where you could jump up and argue either side of the pendulum passionately. And actually, walking in here today, I felt that way. I, I was still really uh, unsure. But what moved me was uh, Hannah. I suddenly realised, actually, I was on the wrong side of the equation. And it wasn't just because she promised her grandfather. <laughs> Although I must confess that was a significant <laughs> contributing factor. But, but putting the joke aside, I look forward to the engagement. I look forward to the help in managing the real challenges we have coming our way. Kia ora. Martin, no debate? Uh, no. Um, uh, very, rare. <laughs> very rarely, um, from my point of view, as everything being said, I, I do acknowledge uh, the voices from the heart in terms of the submissions that were made. Uh, and without any disrespect whatsoever to the speakers and to the audience, I do obviously particularly want to note in the audience, if I may, uh, Bishop Moxon and Lady Tereti Moxon. And, um, in my time when I was a member of the Parliament on certain so-called conscience issues, uh, I would go to Bishop Moxon for some guidance and help, and I appreciate that, and I want to acknowledge, sir, your presence here today uh, in this room. Uh, without further ado, um, I, I respectfully have nothing to add, and I'm hoping in one moment for a very positive next step forward. Thank you. Okay, that brings me to my right reply, which is going to be very short and not add too much. Let's be clear uh, that previously on April the 1st there were not enough numbers. Even had I supported it, that vote would have been lost. Many councillors wanted to bring people with them on the journey, as you've heard today. So what I did instead was sought to keep the issue alive through the um, other motion, to keep it alive and keep it on the table. However, like Ryan, albeit a unanimous decision of council at that time, it felt wrong at times over the Easter weekend. This way is better, in my opinion, um, and I would have stuck with the in-principle words, I've said that before, but this way does at least provide a positive way forward for us. This way is better because there is a definitive date for the decision, and I recognise that if any mistake was made the first time round, it was around the date, and having no certainty when a decision could be made. Engagement brings the ability of voices to be heard, or voices to be heard. Ears to hear, and hearts to be open. And like many of my colleagues who've spoken before, I believe over the next three weeks, we can work hard to talk, not across each other, but with each other through this process. So uh, we will go to the vote, firstly, to revoke the previous motion of council. Yes, am I right? Yes. yes right. OK, so we'll do it on the board, please. I think I've done it. Ooh. What's happening? Motion one is carried, the revocation of the previous resolution, noting that Deputy Mayor Taylor and Councillor Pascoe are dissenting. Thank you. We'll now go to the motion with the alteration we've already explained today, and we'll take the vote on the board, please. The motion is carried, noting Councillor Pasco and Deputy Mayor Taylor dissenting. So, 
before we close the meeting, um, I'm not going to keep you here because it's, it's dinner time, right? But I do want to say thank you, everyone. I would like to say sincere thanks for the way in which this meeting has been conducted today. It shows that we can actually all work together collaboratively and uh, let that be the way we go forward. Thank you, everyone. Karakia to close the meeting, please. Thank you, Tamay. Um, just before I close, and I want to make some comments, but I'm going to ask one of our co-marchers, I wish Hannah was in here to hear her koro, uh, uh, because I'm going to ask koro. A person came to New Zealand, and this person crossed the Pacific. She came to New Zealand, and she met with uh, the king's mother in Wellington. So I'm going to ask, you, ask them to explain what she signed and what her feeling is, because that person has a lot of mana over the Prime Minister and over the Council. Tim, can you explain that person that came? Uh, we were, in 1995, the King Hyman discussed what the Queen Elizabeth apologised to, 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 the, to New Zealand for what happened. That apology, I think, carried the, what I assume, carried the opportunity for Māori to have a say at every level. So I just wanted to, we just talked about that, that's why we were having a break. So the Queen Elizabeth only made her an apology. Why are we sitting around the table deciding whether we should have closed them? Kia ora, 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 Ki ngā kai kaunihira e tui tui e whakakota i tī. Koe rata tika ngā o te kingi tama. Ko te kakau i roto i tōku waha, wai, uh, ko te kōhu o te paipa, wai ho ki a koutou. Ki te peka mai ki waho, ko te ngau i te kii i tōna niho ki aia anō. If we stick together, we'll be united. But once we split, my teeth will be gnashing. Forever and forever. <coughs> and we want to stay united.